after we have estimated the future requirements and considering the status of the resources uh, we need to formulate policies policy guidelines for future development many cities all over the world have city based policies which guide the development and which guides the basically which guides the plan and consequently the development or which guide which guide the plan and the development of the city for example new york has a uh, open policy for open space that no new yorker should be 5 minutes away from any open space accordingly their plan reflects accordingly this uh, uh, the city plan has taken care of this policy based on the city level uh, based on the policy guidelines uh, the plan is prepared starting with the vision and accordingly the strategies and proposals are formulated as you can as you will be seeing that how various sectors what sort of strategies uh, are formulated or need to be formulated the first as i as i as i discussed before or as i referred to before as i referred to before that when we start preparing the plan we should have a vision and the plan also and the vision should vision and would also have aims and objectives which would help in achieving the vision then the, the plan is also we have already uh, discussed about planning approaches and concepts earlier so the plan can be based on any planning approach it can be sustainable it can be smart it can be livable etc and then the plan needs to have a methodology the step by step process of achieving from formulation to the implementation so the methodology needs to be there then what is the scope of the plan the scope are the aspect and also in terms of the scope is for the area for which the plan is being formulated and the plan basically is formulated for the planning area which is delineated and which is notified for future cities and then one assesses the future requirements and formulates as we discussed that how we do status assessments and then we come to formulation of strategies and guidelines we come to formulation of strategies and proposals the strategies and proposals are worked out for various sectors for example for shelter it would be provision of housing for all communities and provision of shelter options other shelter options like night shelters etc for the infrastructure sector that is the physical infrastructure strategies can be uh, provision of adequate water supply sanitation facility drainage networks wastewater network solid waste management facilities power supply etc provision of alternative and renewable sources of power supply rainwater harvesting and so on. for social infrastructure the strategies would relate to provision of facilities for health education recreation leisure safety and so on for economic sustainability livelihoods provision of livelihoods is a very important and therefore the strategy which would relate to economic development would pertain to provision of economic uh, provision of employment opportunities and thus the strategies for economic development would be a creation of employment opportunities for people of the city also to encourage local economic development considering the the planning area of the city which is much beyond the city boundaries may have abundant natural resources so the strategy and the proposals would also specify uh, or would should put forth optimum utilization of natural resources including land resource water resource and minimizing and and minimize the over exploitation of the resources there need to be also strategies for pollution reduction in the city in order so as to achieve 
desired urban environmental quality. Climate change and disaster risk are have been very serious concerns of the cities today and would remain in future. So basically the strategies and proposals would relate to strategies for achieving and maintaining comfortable climatic conditions and adaptation and also relate to attaining low carbon cities. Strategies for disaster risk reduction and management are also should also be a part of the plan. Apart from the infrastructure, shelter, environmental quality, the city or the, strat the plan should also um, strategize for attaining imageability and harmonious urban form. Preserving conservation and preservation of the historicity, the sociocultural values and the built heritage would also be important strategies for the city. Strategies for, strategies for financing the plan has to be incorporated in the plan. And finally, one has to have a robust governance setup if we need to implement the plan and thus provision of an institutional setup for plan making, implementation, monitoring, review need to be included in the plan. Since planning is about making the right choices, we, we need to have alternative scenarios, development scenarios, so that one can evaluate the alternative scenarios and finally go ahead with the best possible option. While we evaluate the scenarios, as I was mentioning before, that we need to, we need, we have some criteria. Thus, the criteria for evaluating the scenarios is, is the plan sustainable? Has it considered renewable options? Uh, has it looked into resource uh, recycling or resource conservation? Or have we, uh, has the plan uh, or does the scenario, has the plan um, addressed uh, resource conservation as a part of the scenario? Does the plan consider stakeholder participation in the visioning? Is the plan inclusive and equitable? Does the plan include emerging concerns? Is the plan sustainable? And for various sectors, we see whether the, does the plan consider for equitable distribution of housing supply and affordable housing for low-income communities? For infrastructure, we see does the plan have provisions for equitable distribution of safe water supply? Have alternative sources of supply, water supply being considered? This is the land use plan. It's a proposed land use plan for the city. These are the existing residential areas and these are what, is, what are proposed. These are along the major highways main, um, uh, and there is a res, uh, these are the recreational areas which are proposed and we have the uh, recreation areas, parks, garden, all within the city. So this is part is the existing city and this part is the proposed city because the city is not static, city would grow. So these are for the future development areas which have been earmarked for future development. So residential areas, then we have the public and semi-public areas, then we have the water bodies, there is a water body here which has been proposed and pro for protection as a recreational zone so this, these are the area and then there's also a buffer zone which is there which is uh, to protect the uh, uh, water body uh, for from development and then there are also the proposed transportation corridors this is a railway line existing railway line and but then there are these proposed corridors which are uh, proposed for future development the plan is put forth in the form of a report that uh, and you can see the report structure here which starts from the contents and the list of tables figures as generally a report would be but it would also have the entire steps of plan preparation starting from the status assessments of the various sectors and then coming down to the other steps of plan preparation that is the policy guidelines as we discussed and then the alternative development scenarios and then evaluation of the scenarios and then uh, finally going ahead 
with the chosen option so how do we implement the plan how do we monitor and review the plan so basically this would be the uh, report structure and we end with uh, the uh, references and uh, uh, you, you can see from this uh, table this slide The plan, we, uh, master plans have all, always faced the problems of implementation. Uh, one of the most important uh, methods of implementation of the plan is to projectize the plan, is to formulate projects and you can see the list of possible projects here which can be infrastructure projects, it can be conservation projects, it can be conservation of heritage and expressings, it can be provision of maybe physical infrastructure, water supply project, or it can be uh, uh, providing maybe a school, uh, or for that matter, an open area, a planned park. Uh, so similarly, projects like this, or for, the, for, the, for that matter, it can be a, a solar power, generating plant so any anything or a rainwater harvesting project so there can be many uh, such projects and so therefore the plan needs to be broken needs to needs to be broken down into uh, various projects for implementation and the uh, these projects basically what we call as the dpr or the detailed project reports need to be worked out and when one um, makes this or one, when one formulates this uh, detailed project reports, uh, there are certain steps to be followed and those are start from the site context and the uh, then formulation of the project then uh, or in the design of the project then the um, itemization the, or the components and further broken down into sub components and itemization and then costing of the project and then finally the implementation of the project which would be phasing uh, operation and which would be operation and maintenance sorry, and and finally the implementation of the project and operation and ma uh, maintenance planning so which would have the phasing of the project in terms of money in terms of time and also the uh, institutional mechanism the funding mechanism and end with the appraisal of the project which is uh, the social social appraisals the economic appraisals the technical and the environmental appraisals so here you can see a detailed project report that is a of a solar hub for a city so uh, there is this project formulation and design stage which i had mentioned earlier where there uh, there's a brief information about the project you can see from the slide then the need of the project based on considerations, various considerations, then the site assessments, then selection of the technology and the technical aspects and the specification and standards. Now this is followed by the operation and maintenance requirements, the various appraisals, social and environmental appraisals, because this sort of project, solar hubs, would impact the environment in the environmental impact would be significant so the solar and the environmental appraisals the social and the environmental appraisals are given here it is not so much of a with a profit making motive so therefore it is a sort of a social project with environmental benefits so therefore it is given and if you can see here 
the project implementation schedules and the project costs and the financial analysis. So here a brief description about the project is given and here you can see the slide through these slides uh, the, uh, the details of the project which have been worked out.